This Strand Warlock build is one of the strongest builds in all of Destiny 2 PvP. Don't believe me? This class has crazy survivability, crazy map pressure, and overall just a super fun and addicting kit to use. This is the Broodweaver, and let me show you how to use it. All right, let's start off with the basics first. You're gonna to wanna to run a Healing Rift. Healing Rifts last 15 seconds, heal you for 40 HP per second, and when you're already at full HP, it will give you three HP per second, and it can go up to 15 HP. Not the greatest overshield in the world, but it's still great for just overall sustain in PvP. Now, next up, I recommend Burst Glide, just because it's the fastest, most fluid jump. Realistically, if you're playing Warlock in PvP, other than some shenanigans with Dawnblade, you should be running Burst Glide. Now, time to actually start diving into Strand. So starting off the super Needle Storm. So how this works is it's a sh shutdown type of super. So you will cast your super, you will send out all these tracking little projectiles that when they hit the ground, they'll explode and turn into Threadlings. Now I'm gonna be honest, this is one of the weaker parts of the subclass. The super has some really wonky hit regs, but there are some tips later that I have learned to try to help out compensate with that. All right, so the Strand Warlock melee is Arcane Needle. So you throw this little needle forward, and it does 68 damage to an opposing guardian. You get three charges of these, so you actually need to use all three if you want to down an enemy guardian just with your melee. So Bungie back in season 21 actually buffed this up for the cooldown purposes, making it so at zero charges, the cooldown is reduced by 15% in it. At two charges, your cooldown is reduced by 30%. Now, I don't know where they're getting any of these numbers, but in my testing, all of these numbers are just wrong. So I'm just gonna save all that math that you don't really care about and don't wanna hear and just tell you the outcome. So. At a tier 3 strength, you get your first melee back in 90 seconds, which is a 20% increase. Your second melee, you get back in 64 seconds, which is a 43% increase. And then your third melee, you get back in 40 seconds, which is a 64% increase. And then also on the flip hand, if you're running tier 10 strength, you get your first melee back in 42 seconds, which is a 7% increase. You get your second melee back in 30 seconds, which is a 33% increase. And then you get your third melee back in 19 seconds, which is a 58% increase. Now, next up is your grenade. You're gonna be using the Threadling Grenade. So what this does is you can throw the grenade and it will pop open three Threadlings. These Threadlings will go out and chase after enemies and they will do 41 damage to an opponent. Now, there's a specific mechanic that goes into play with the Broodweaver. Anytime there are Threadlings that are just out and about that you throw that don't actually track to enemies, they will come back onto you and you can hold up to five Threadlings. And then if you hit somebody or shoot somebody with a shot while threadlings are attached to you they will jump off and attack the enemy All right next up on our list is the aspects the first one we're going to go over is weave walk this is the bread and butter of the brood weavers kit there's a lot to go over here so let's get into it weave walk is an air ability so you use it the same way you'd use icarus dash that when you activate it you go into this ghost-like form when you're in this form you will drain your melee energy. It takes about 10% to activate it and then we'll drain the rest of your melee over the course of five seconds for each melee. So you can be in Weave Walk for about 14 seconds nonstop if you really choose to do so. While you're in Weave Walk, you're gonna gain a Threadling attached onto you every about half a second or so up to five. And then as well as while you're in Weave Walk, you get 90% damage reduction. And it also hides your HP from people too. Now that's pretty crazy when you really think about it. That makes a 90 RPM sniper do 39 damage to the head, a 140 hand cannon do 70 to the head. You could tank heavy grenade launchers, rocket launchers. You could even tank a four time Izzy to the head without the catalyst on the Izanagis, but still a four time shot from an Izanagis. Now, when you're in this ability, you're, you can't shoot people, res people, or deactivate bombs and countdown or anything like that. Also note when you're in weave walk, that freezing and suspending will take you out of the weave walk, but honestly, that's not really much of a problem as we'll talk about later also finally a big thing about weave walk is your movement speed is capped it doesn't matter if you have high mobility low mobility you have a lightweight weapon on you have transversive steps on no matter what your mobility is capped you can walk or sprint but the sprinting is capped All right so the next aspect is weaver's call casting your riff will send out three threadlings it will also send out any threadlings that are perched onto you pretty simple pretty easy to understand now we're on to the fragments. We get three to pick from with our choice of aspects. So the most important one and the one that you definitely need is Threat of Evolution. So what this does is it increases the Threadling travel distance and also increases their damage. Brings it up from 41 to 45 damage per Threadling. It also gives a plus 10 to Intellect, which is a nice little bump. Overall, pretty mandatory. Definitely need this one. 
Next up is Threat of Generation. Dealing damage grants you grenade energy, gives you a negative 10 to discipline, but overall just makes it so you can get your grenade back, so you can spam more Threadlings with your grenade a lot faster, especially because it's going to be a little harder to build into discipline. So the third fragment slot is a user's pick, whatever you feel like you want to use. Personally, I use Threat of Binding, Super Final Blows, Emit a Suspending Burst from the target. Mainly, I use it to get the 10 resilience that it gives, but it's really whatever you want to use. I think Threat of Warding to get Woven Mail is pretty good. Threat of Ascent to get increased stats when you activate your grenade is also really good. So honestly, there aren't a whole lot of good options here, but it's whatever you want for the third one. Now we're onto the exotics. I have another world is the first one I would recommend. This gives you a 50% additional base grenade melee and class ability regeneration rate. Fantastic if you're just out here trying to spam your abilities. Maybe you couldn't get the best build. Honestly, overall, I would say I have another world is the best. But if you're also just lo looking for other exotics, I think Aphidian Aspects and Transverse of Steps are both great picks as well. They're fantastic neutral game exotics. Overall, just great. Everybody knows how good they are. Aphidians just makes it so you can pull out your weapons really quickly when you come out of the Weave Walk, and Transversus helps the class have a little bit more mobility. So I'm just going to hit this right off the bat, just because I have so many people talking about this in my other Strand videos in the comment section. What about Swarmers? This is obviously a Strand-specific exotic. I don't think it's all that great. The fact that you can unravel your targets with the Threadlings is alright. You're not really creating too many tangles, so getting a Threadling from that doesn't really do much. Plus, you get Threadlings so fast anyway. Unraveling with the Threadlings is just sort of whatever. I think the other three exotics offer way more than Swarmers do, but if you want to use Swarmers, I guess you can, but I personally wouldn't recommend it too much. Before I get into showing you how to actually use the subclass, there are actually three weapons that really, really shine with the Strand Warlock, Thorn, La Monarch, and No Time to Explain. Damage over time weapons like Thorn and La Monarch are fantastic because if you have Threadlings attached onto you, normally when you shoot somebody, only one Threadling will jump off of you that is lurched onto you. But with Thorn, one shot from Thorn will have two jump off you, and with the Monarch, one arrow, given you actually hit the poison part of it, will actually send off three Threadlings, which is super, super strong, especially for a bow. And then No Time, though this interaction did get nerfed a little bit ago, it's still really good if you're in the perk of Weave Walk, the little orb will actually shoot them still and send off Threadlings, though those Threadlings do about half damage and the orb only does six damage. Overall, it's still a good way to get some chunk damage off while the enemy can't really do anything. And if you are enjoying the video, please remember to leave a like and comment as it does help out with the video a lot, as well as consider subscribing. It, it would mean a lot to me and you can always unsubscribe in the future. So on Brewweaver, it is very important that you build into it correctly. I recommend you build into recovery and strength. Most importantly, you need to have like tier tens of those and then try to make sure you have at least six resilience because it's crucible, counters the thorn and a variety of other things. And then the rest of your stats really try to put into discipline or intellect. I honestly can't stress this enough about how important it is. If you do not build into strength, this class will suck. You need to at least, in my honest opinion, have at least nine strength and then recovery is very good as well to really, really utilize the kit. And if you're having trouble making a build, go over to d2armorpicker.com. This website makes it super easy. Once you log in, you can pick what you want. So if you want recovery and strength and with whatever exotic you want, so let's say transverse of steps, it makes it very easy for you to get a build given you know, you have the armor for it. All right, now that we've talked about how to build the class, what you use on the class, let's talk about how you actually play the class. If you're playing Broodweaver, you really want to focus heavily on using your primary. Its style of gameplay really enhances that play style. Weave Walk is pretty much a get out of jail free card in any mid to long range engagements. If you're a little weak, you can just Weave Walk away. It also gives you the Threadlings, which is super crazy in 1v1 to 1v2 primary duels. Not only do your opponents have to focus on you, they also have to focus on little spiders that are running at them to do 45 damage. Now I'm going to show you how a typical Trials game will start for me. When I start the game, I always start off a little bit slow, letting my melee build up a bit. You want to keep at least one melee charge at all times. So the more charged, the better. So after I get a big charge going, I will start spamming Weave Walk. I will always have two to three Threadlings on me at all times. So after the first round, once I get a good amount of melee energy, I start the beginning of every single Trials or Comp round. I will pop Weave Walk, get two to three Threadlings right off the bat, given I have enough melee charge for it. And it makes a huge difference. I almost always have those on me. And so if you watch my Broodweaver gameplay at all, whether it's here on YouTube or over on Twitch, you will always see at the beginning of every round, I pretty much pop my Weave Walk, get two to three Threadlings, as you see right now. And I am always have something to help my primary gunplay. Now, the biggest counters to Broodweaver, the freezing and suspending, honestly isn't much of an issue as long as you play the primary ranges. Most of those type of abilities that will freeze or suspend you, it, 
means you have to be close to the target. So for the most part, as long as you just play primary ranges, you don't need to really worry about it. The only time that stuff will really get you is if you play super aggressive. But as long as you're playing primary ranges, you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. The only thing I would say you really need to worry about is a strand hunter flying in at you sometimes or conditional finality can sometimes get you. But most of the other ways you can avoid pretty well, given you actually given you position correctly. So let's talk tipping tricks. So starting off with the rift, obviously you can use your rift as you normally would. But because it sends out threadlings, it is a fantastic defense mechanism to just run around a corner and pop it out. It makes it super hard for people to actually push you. And in fact, you can actually pop your rift out of your weave walk without any delay. So it makes it super great for when you pop your weave walk and you're running away. If you go around a corner, you immediately pop a rift. You will get so many free kills of somebody just pushing at you or thinking they're got a free kill on you. You'll either trade or most of the time you'll just downright kill them without them getting you, especially if they don't have a shotgun. I recommend this so much. It's super strong. As well as if you're popping your weave walk inside a rift, it makes it pretty much impossible for you to die, which is great, realistically, because you're going to heal faster than they're going to be able to damage you. For your super, it's not the greatest. The hit reg isn't the best, but on a, you can't actually pop it straight out of the weave walk. But if you weave walk in and deactivate your weave walk and press the super as fast as you can, you can still throw it pretty quick. And then as soon as your super is done, go back into weave walk. It makes it so you can pretty regularly live and my best advice for using the super is almost kind of use it as a shotgun weave walk in run in shotgun them with it and then weave walk out this clip here that i have is it's from stream so sorry the quality is a little bad but it kind of demonstrated i pop weave walk literally just walk in and shotgun the guy essentially and then pop weave walk to get away and lastly if you're a big fan of snap skating if you don't know what that is that is where on dawn blade if you have the snap melee on you can actually slide jump and hit your super key button and it will make you jump forward and give you a big burst of speed that you can icarus dash into you can actually do this on strand warlock you don't have an icarus dash to help keep your momentum but you can do it if you so choose now i hope you did enjoy this very in-depth overlook over the strand warlock i really do recommend you give it a try if you'd like to see me use it live, please consider following twitch.tv slash daltonix. I stream every Monday as of right now, typically using Strand Warlock. And if you have any further questions, please put them down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.